Welcome to this loop tutorial that deals with a form of topic modeling called the Meaning Extraction Method, or MEM, or MAM. As you've learned, Luke is a tool to understand how features of language can identify psychological processes. Now, most of the words that Luke analyzes are small, almost invisible words like pronouns and articles, and also emotion words that capture linguistic style. What Luke misses is the content or actual topics of speech. In this module, you'll learn how to identify the underlying themes of text samples using some Luke tools. This is one of a dozen drawings or so used in a test that clinical psychologists used to use to determine people's motivations or drives. The thematic apperception test, or TAT, asks people to look at the drawings and to make up a story about the characters, what was happening, and what was likely to occur afterwards. In our research, tens of thousands of people have written a story about this picture. Now, how do we study them? A few years ago, I asked about 1,400 people to complete a series of questionnaires and also tell a story about the picture. I wanted to determine what the most common themes of the stories were. Now, prior to computers, researchers would normally get groups of experts to read each essay and rate it along several dimensions. This took weeks. Around 2008, one of my former students, Cindy Chung, came up with a way to automatically do this test. The basic idea involved four steps. The first was to identify perhaps 100, maybe as many as 400, the most common content words that people used in the task. In the picture you saw, this might include words such as woman, lab, desk, chemicals, experiment, teacher, and so forth. The second step would be to go into each essay and calculate how often each person's essay used each of these words. This would result in a word frequency table, or a matrix, with the words at the top. So if we had, let's say, 300 words, for all 1,400 people, we'd have a large 300 by 1,400 table of numbers. And most cells actually would be zeros. The third step is that we would do a correlational procedure called factor analysis of the table. This method can tell us the degree to which different words are correlated with each other. For example, we might find that some people use words related to lab procedures like beakers, test tubes, and chemicals. Other people might focus on the relationship between the two people, focusing on their facial expressions, eye gaze, maybe feelings of concern, contempt, pride, etc. The factor analysis can tell us which groups of words naturally hang around with other types of words. Think about this. Our factor analysis will automatically be telling us some of the underlying themes people are writing about. Some people may talk about the people, others about the science, others may be concerned with reasons for the story in the first place. Maybe they're concerned about taking an exam or curing a disease. Finally, once we know which cl word clusters exist, we can calculate how each essay is devoted to each of the themes we have discovered. Okay, to summarize. Number one, we have to identify the most common content words across all the essays we're studying. Number two, we need to calculate how frequently each essay uses each of the content words of interest. Number three, we per perform a factor analysis on the the use of these various content words. And number four, we will apply the findings of the factor analysis to each person's writing sample. Okay, let's go into the details of each of these steps. The first two steps about identifying content words and calculating their frequencies can be done at the same time with Luke 22. Let's start with the text I'll be using, which is an Excel or CSV file with the TAT essays that Luke will be analyzing. Next, let me show you the demographics file we'll use in SPSS, which includes sex, age, personality variables, and even the CESD depression scale. You might use another stats package like R, SAS, STATA, or something else instead of SPSS. Once I've performed meaning extraction on the essays, I'll link the output with the personality measures. Okay, now we open Luke 22. On the menu on the left side, Go to the Meaning Extraction button and click. 
Across the top are several tabs. Let's first load the data set we want to analyze. We'll be using the Excel file shown earlier. Click on it and you see it is loaded. We need to select the column which we plan to analyze. In this case, it is text. Now before we do anything else, go over the other tabs on top. The first is data segmentation. Now, there are multiple ways to segment your data files, but we are just going to analyze each text separately. Next, click on the Meaning Extraction Settings tab. I can't emphasize how important this one is. I'm going to walk through each of the options. Okay, Ngram Settings refer to your analyzing single words or multiple words in a row. I'm staying with single words or one grams. It makes life simpler. Skipping text. You typically don't want to analyze text with very low word count. The skip text option tells Luke to skip text that are below the default value. Here it is 10. In most cases, I prefer dropping files with less than 50 words because very short files are inherently unstable. In this case, it doesn't matter since all my texts are longer than 100 words. Omit words or stop words are the words you don't want MEM to analyze. These are often function words or words lacking in essential content. Click on the button, choose your language, and below you will see the entire default stop list. Change is needed. But I can't emphasize enough, always use stop words for MEM. If you don't, your output will essentially reflect writing style rather than content or themes. The pre-processing or lemmatizer settings. A lemma refers to or means a stem. What a lemmatizer does is to put most words with a common stem together so that words like ten or tenth are counted like the number ten, one, zero. Or the words walking, walks, walked, walker are, are all counted as a single, single word walk. Output settings are particularly important. In the right column, you are asked to select the strategy you want for identifying the content words you'll be using for your MEM analyses. I usually choose the first option to retain all words that appear in at least X percent of all the documents. The listed default of 10 percent means that a word won't be retained unless 10 percent of the documents have that word. For more diverse writing samples, I often go as low as 2 to 3 percent. But for the current TAT essay, essays, I'm estimating 6 percent will be better. As you work with MEM, you will start to see the strengths and weaknesses of different settings. The next set of boxes below the threshold parameter refer to the type of output you want. The first option, binary output, analyzes each file and for each variable gives an output of zero if that particular word is not used and a one if it is used at least once. We found that the binary output tends to give very good results with relatively small files with fewer than say a thousand words. The second choice gives Luke-like output based on percentage of total words. I strong, strongly recommend this option if your files vary a great deal in size, where some files could have, say, 50 words and others as many as 10,000 or more words. The third option, raw word counts, are used for, well, really, I don't know, maybe people who are kind of back to nature. I've actually never used it. Okay, it's show time. Click on the Run button on the bottom, kick back and relax, and feel good about your accomplishments so far. And just like that, we will see the output. The first tab lists just the frequencies of all the content words from the most frequently used to the least. You might look the list over to see if it makes sense. The tab on the right is the important one, the MEM binary output file. This is the one that we will use for the factor analysis. As you look at the file, all the numbers are ones and zeros. OK, click the Save Results button on the bottom. I'm going to open the file in Excel so that you can see the output again. And there it is in a format you know well by now. We're ready for the third stage of the MEM procedure, performing a factor analysis. Before moving forward, let's again look at the output briefly. You'll see the content words across the top of the output file, and each line refers to each of the 1400 text files. This is effectively a CSV or Excel file that you can now run with a program that can do factor analysis. Most of you will probably rely on R, but others might use SPSS, SAS, STATA, or something else. I'm going to import the file into SPSS. Once I've done that, 
First, I open the factor analysis module. I'll do this by clicking on analyses, then go to dimension reduction, and among the choices, choose factor. Now select on the content terms from age to the last variable and add them to the box on the right. And then go to the buttons on the right, starting with descriptives. I just stay with de the default options, which is the initial solution. Okay, click continue. In the extraction menu, I leave the method option as principal components. I always choose scree plots, a fixed number of factors. Usually I'll start with six factors or uh, sometimes 12, just to see what the data looks like. And finally, I increase the number of iterations from the default 25 to 100. That's because I have a big data set to analyze. And then continue. Next is the rotation button. At the top, I generally select Veramax rotation, and I bump the iterations up to 100. Continue. We'll skip the scores option right now and go to the option button. I recommend sorting the output by size and suppressing the loading as less than 0.20. OK, continue. Now we're back in the main menu and click OK to run the analyses. You'll see the analysis is very quick. And the first information concerns the communality statistics of each variable. I'm skipping over this and going first to the scree plot. The scree plot reflects the degree to which factor each factor contributes to the overall factor analysis solution. In this case, factor one has a large eigenvalue of six, the second one about four, and so forth. One rule of thumb is that you can use the scree plot to determine how many factors you really want to settle on. To get a picture of this, I try to get a better sense of the first 40 or so factors to see where the discontinuities are. As you look at the graph, there is a break around three factors, another around six, another around nine, maybe 12 and 19. Now I've chosen 12 factors for the purposes of illustration. However, the choice of factors is somewhat arbitrary. Okay, I've just run the factor analysis again and specified 12 factors. So let's quickly look at which of our variables loaded onto each of the 12 factors. I always go to the part of the output called Rotated Component Matrix. At the top of the page are the variables that all loaded on factor one. Look at the words, student, class, nervous, grade, final, exam, teacher, professor. The word student loaded the highest and the loadings drop afterwards. This team call it the conscientious or nervous student factor. You can see that all of these terms are clearly related. Scrolling down, factor two includes words Cancer, cure, fine, breast, patient, save. We'll call this theme cure cancer. Factor three is face, eyes, smile, slowly, hands, etc. Let's call this one face and hands. Factor four is the University of Texas graduate fa factor. Factor five is family factor and hands skipping forward. Factor eight is a death virus factor. Factor 10 is a test tube beaker chemistry factor. Factor 12 is a mother-daughter factor. The point is that most of the factors are meaningful underlying themes. Just by analyzing the statistical relationships among words, we can pull out valuable and meaningful word clusters that represent basic topics of the essays. A quick side note. The rotated component matrix you see here can be directly exported into a Luke dictionary by using the dictionary workbench. You'll remember from tutorial four. Just copy the matrix output and paste it into Excel. Now save it as an Excel or CSV file, and then open the Luke dictionary workbench. From there, you'll load the saved file. The new dictionary file may need a little cleaning, for example, I'm removing the words with no loadings. Once done, the dictionary file is ready to use. The old factor scores can either be used as weights in the dictionary, or you can replace the weights with X's so that each word is weighted the same. Now back to the story. In reality, most factor analysis programs can bypass the need to make a separate Luke dictionary. Instead, the programs automatically generate standardized scores representing each word cluster for each essay. In fact, let's return to our factor analysis program 
and rerun our analysis and have the computer compute the factor scores. You're looking at the scores option again. I'm now checking the save factor option using the regression solution. I click continue and now run the factor analysis program one last time. Here is the original data file. As I scroll to the right, however, you will see that the computer added 12 factors, which are now computed for each essay. You can look at the first essay and see that it was fairly low on the nervous student factor, but on factor 5, the family factor, the essay was relatively high. In other words, we are seeing every essay's profile concerning the topics that are being written about. And this brings us to the final part of our story. Linking the factor scores with other psychologically meaningful dimensions. Recall that at the beginning of this module, I noted that when people completed the TAT exercise, they also filled out a number of personality and other questionnaire items. This additional information was in another file. Some of the information included sex, age, the big five personality dimensions, and a depression measure called the CEST. I then ended up merging the personality data with the factor scores and, in SPSS, simply correlating the personality measures with the 12 MEM themes. And here are the results. Factor 1 is the nervous conscientious student factor. And, gloriously, we find that people who use words in this factor, they tend to be females. Note that 1 is equal to male and 2 equals female. And there are also people high in conscientious and neuroticism. They are also low in openness. There is order in the world. And people who tend to be into nuances of faces, hands, smiles, and smells are low in extroversion. They're high in neuroticism, and they're quite open to new experience and maybe a bit depression prone. Depending on your research interest, you could spend days poring over the results. The purpose of this module has been to give you a general idea of the meaning extraction method how it works, and the kind of information it can provide. I urge you to begin to play with some of the data sets to see what you find. You really do need to approach it with a sense of playfulness. Try out different factor analytic approaches, mixing which words you include in the list, and simply experimenting with different data sets. You should now be ready for your next text analysis adventure. Until next time.